Hey, hey, leaders. That reminded me of like that. Hey, hey, where are the monkeys? Am I dating myself? My mom used to sing that thing when I was little. Um, so today we are going to talk about resilience. Yes, it is tip Thursday on a Friday. That seems to be my theme lately. Um, but we're gonna be talking about resilience, okay? Resilience as a leader. This is crazy important. I feel like I said every time, this is crazy important, okay? But resilience is literally how you're bouncing back from something. Negative things are gonna happen in your business. You're not always gonna like what you do, what other people do, okay? Circumstances, whatever. But we have to be resilient as leaders, okay? So, we, oh, I forgot, it's fine. Okay, so we start off with a quote that says, great leaders overcome regret with resilience, okay? Regrettable things are gonna happen. You are human, you are not perfect. Surprise, neither am I. Okay, that's life, that's the way it goes, all right? But leaders are learners. Leaders are learners. And what happens when you're learning? What happens when you watch your trial, your trial, Lord, your child try to figure out a math problem that they don't get? What happens when they're learning that? They're going to make mistakes, right? So we're teaching them how to fix those mistakes so that they can get the right answer. It's the same thing when you're a leader. Learners, or leaders are learners, and you make mistakes when you learn, okay? So keep that in mind for yourself, but also keep that in, line, or in mind for your leaders, they're gonna make mistakes. Again, they're not perfect, all right? So there is a difference between stamina and resilience. So last week we talked about stamina and being a um, staircase leader instead of a elevator leader, all right? And you're like, okay, well, is there really a difference? Yes, so it's almost like um, to continue versus to resume, okay? Remember, homeschool mom, okay? So I really like this, all right? So to resume implies that someone stopped. Right? When you resume something, even your music, like, would you, or Netflix, would you like to resume watching? That means, right, if you stopped, what do you do? You resume it when you bring Netflix back up, okay? When you're watching Netflix for too long and it pauses all of a sudden and you're like, I'm trying to get to the next episode, stop judging me, Netflix. It's asking if you want to continue, okay? So, resuming, we stopped the show, we took a break. And then when we're continuing, we're already in it. You just have to keep going, okay? So it's kind of the same thing with stamina and resilience, all right? So we have three common cringe factors in leadership. And I love this because I cringe so very often sometimes when I look back at how I spoke to people, um, asking them to party or join or whatever. Even in my leadership, I'm like, ooh, Anya, like, why'd you say those things? But like, we're gonna have those cringy moments. We are, okay, because we are learning, all right? So we have three of those that make us kind of wince when we look back at them. So we have our my bad, which is on you. You have done the problem, like you are the issue, okay? Um, they're bad when others do it to you, okay? And then too bad, which is just like circumstances really just kind of suck and that all of those things happen, right? All those things happen. So we're gonna start with my bad, okay? So um, the girl goes into talking about how Jesus didn't come because we have it all together. He literally came for us because we blow it. Same thing with leadership. We blow it sometimes, okay? Um, there's no rewind button. So you are gonna blow it, but you can't rewind and take it back, right? There's only redemption and you moving forward with whatever has happened, all right? Um, so she says to let God work through your leadership's mistakes. So be honest with your team, be honest about what's going on, let God work through those so that one, your people see you as human, Two, they know they don't have to be perfect. None of us are, right? Things happen. So it makes it so you can learn from it and they can learn from it, which is extremely, extremely powerful, okay? Um, so be honest because it's really gonna give other people hope that they can do it too, all right? If someone's like, oh, you know, I just, I could never be a director because they're so perfect and they always have their businesses together and it's beautiful and it just works like this wonderful, well-oiled machine. Not always, not always, okay? That's the goal is to get it to work as this well-oiled machine, but it takes a lot to get there, a lot of mistakes, right? To see what's working, what's not, take it out, do things differently, all right? So we have to remember that, and you have to remember too that as you move up in your leadership, as you get deeper in your leadership, as you're a leader for longer, okay, you are not defined by your mistakes. Did you hear that? Even in your life. You are not defined by your mistakes. There's actually this quote that I love, and it says, um, that I've made so many mistakes in my life that have actually turned my life into art. And I literally feel like that is me. That is all that I embody. Oh my gosh, I just feel like constantly, it's like, crap, I made a mistake. Crap, I made a mistake. And sometimes I'm like, do I do anything right? 
right? You have those days it happens, okay? But we're learning, we're changing, we're growing, we're evolving. That's what our leadership meeting was about, okay? All of those things. So you learn from it and you rise up, okay? When I first started um, my leadership journey, I like didn't get it. Like I had not been a leader. <laughs> I'm like, I lead my kids. Like that's about it, right? So for me, I was like, okay, I mean, good luck. You got this. Like you, you can do it. I believe in you. That's about it. There was no really checking in. How can I help you? Checking in. Let me give you this challenge. Checking in. Let me help you grow your leadership. There was none of that. Okay. And then I was a lead consultant and we had just moved here to Fort Hood and my life was completely crumbling before my eyes. And I like completely disengaged. Okay. To the point where Whitney was like, do you want this or do you not want this? And I was like, honestly, right now, like I, I just can't, I can't wrap my brain around Sensi right now because I'm like just a mess. All right. And I did not lead. I did not lead for many, 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 many months. I did not lead. Okay. I wasn't present. I would cheer people on. I would check numbers and I was active and above, but I wasn't leading the way I wish I would have. Okay. I didn't know. So that's something that I have learned from. And my biggest thing now is you can slow down. You can have a hard leadership moment. Do not put down that kit. Still check in and love on your people, no matter what. Okay, it takes two seconds for you to voice message someone and be like, hey, just checking in. Who wants to count for that? Hey, just checking in. It, it doesn't take a lot. It's not this super in-depth thing. Okay, no matter what you're going through, even the hardest of hard. And there are some leaders who are going through some mess in this group. Okay, and they're still checking on their teammates. They're still doing what needs to be done all right, to move forward. So that's the thing. We're all going to make mistakes in our leadership. Where you started is not where you have to finish. One of the blessings, you can completely change it, okay? So when I started to see my group was was coming together and growing, and I was almost a star consultant, I was like, I really have to put this together. Like these people, like I'm, the, I'm supposed to be the mama bear, right? I got to get ready no matter what's going on in my life. I can check on my people and I can make sure I hit my own personal PRV, okay? So learn from your mistakes and rise up. That does not define you as a leader. That moment in time, what, maybe six months, does not define me as a leader because I went on to promote back to back to back months hitting director and now I'm a superstar director. It didn't define me, but it definitely shaped my leadership, how I lead now, how I look at things, how I talk to people who are having hard issues in their life, okay, and still wanna work their business. It has shaped everything. Learn, grow, evolve, okay? All right, so cringe by your mistakes, but then continue. And I love that. I feel like that's life. That's how life rolls. You cringe and you're like, why did I do that? Why did I do that when I was 20 years old? That was really stupid. And then you move forward, okay? You don't keep doing the same dumb thing over and over again that you did when you were 20. You move forward and you do it differently, all right? Next, they're bad, okay? So this is the second cringy thing that happens in leadership, they're bad. Most people are good. Most people have good hearts. They want to see you thrive, okay? Um, most people are good. They wanna bless you, they wanna help you, they come to you with pure good intentions, they're not out to get you, okay? But sometimes you do have those people in your team, okay? It might be maybe your leader, I don't know. Sometimes you have those people who are gonna nitpick you to death. Sometimes you have those people, even in life, who are gonna tell you everything you're doing wrong, okay? And it seems like they're really, really out to get you. That have, It's unfortunate, but it does happen, all right? The higher up you get, I'll be completely honest with you, the higher up you get in your title, the longer you're in your leadership, again, the deeper you're in your leadership, the more people will have something negative to say about you. They will. They'll have negative things to say. They'll have negative things to say about your leadership, okay? Um, and in the Bible, it talks, like, in Romans 12, 18, it talks about, pe like, working towards peaceful resolutions. And I really do believe that should be the case um, as much as you can. But I also think that you can't lose your peace over somebody else. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So, like, yes, we want to work towards peaceful, resol peaceful resolutions, but we also want to make sure that we are not losing our peace because someone is nitpicking us to death, okay? Are we going to continue giving energy to that when we're just doing our best and our best intentions, okay? So I want you to think about that, all right? Because sometimes those people in your life are unmovable, all right, to a certain extent. So sometimes you will have a crappy teammate that just is so mean to you. They suck the life out of you. They tell you what a crappy leader you are. Um, it doesn't always happen, but it does happen, okay? And I can't remove that person from the team. I can't 
I can't do any of that, but I do get to choose who I engage with. Okay. I do. Am I going to stop shouting that person out when they hit their goals? No, I'm not because this is a business. So I'm not going to put my feelings into it in that way. But if I get a nasty message, am I going to take the time and energy to respond? No, I'm not. We're just going to go ahead and we're going to move that out of the way. And we're going to move on with our life because I got things to do and a business to run. Okay. That's what I mean by that. All right. So if you cannot come to a peaceful resolution with somebody, that is where we bless and we release. Okay, good luck. We love you. You go do your thing over there, not over here. All right, join in my bubble. No more. I don't have time for it. All right, that's what you have to remember. Okay, we cannot fix everyone's negative opinion of us. This is huge and this is hard. Okay, because I had my cringe moment that was my me moment in leadership where I just was not present at all. Okay, I really took on the the burden of trying to fix everyone's negative opinion about me from when I was not present, okay? So I was sitting here trying to spin my wheels even though I was now present, trying to make up for everything that I did back then or I didn't do, all right? You can't do that. Literally, we'll put you into a depressive state, trust me, okay? Learn from Anya, trust me. So you can't do that, okay? You cannot sit here and use up every ounce of effort to fix someone's negative opinion of you, all right? Show the way. Show the way. If their opinion changes, great. If it doesn't, okay. Like, show the way. Do not let them have that much weight on you, okay? Um, in Acts 13, 52 in the Bible, there's actually a lesson about shaking the dust off of your soul, okay? And your bruised ego and then like moving forward um, in the Holy Spirit and with joy. And that's what we want to do. That is literally the epitome of bless and release. I have no ill will towards you. You go do your thing. I wish you success, but you ain't going to cloud my day. Okay, that's bless and release, all right? Um, and know that as you lead, not everybody will like you. You guys, not everybody will like your leadership. It's not that you're being a bad, I mean, maybe you are, but maybe you're not, right? Maybe you're like, dang, but everybody else thinks I'm doing great and I'm doing the best. You have to remember those people don't understand where you're at, okay, in your leadership if they're not there. So if their team size isn't there, if their PRV isn't there, if they don't have your, like they're not gonna understand why you're doing what you're doing, the way you're doing what you're doing, okay? And that might be why they don't like it. And that's okay. They don't have to understand, all right? There's a quote about that too, about trying to make someone else understand what you're trying to say, but they don't have the emotional maturity or mental maturity to even comprehend it. It's the same thing, all right? So you have to remember that. You do the best you can in your leadership. You be at peace with your leadership, okay? Know that you're doing right by your people, all right, and your business, and that you are showing up and you're working and you're doing all of your three legs of success and you're still your self care. Don't forget that, okay? And then you just keep moving, all right? So, this is the best advice that I think that she's had in this book for me personally. Um, but her advice is always try to have tough skin, but never try to have a hardened heart. And I love that. I love that, okay? People are gonna come at you, whether it's a customer coming at you sideways, a teammate coming at you sideways, uh, maybe a leader coming at you sideways. Hey, Shannon, you have to have tough skin, okay? You have to know. I had a lady literally send me a voice message yelling at me, okay? Yelling, cussing me out, yelling at me, this lady. And I was like, she done lost her ever loving mind. And I remember I was walking through Walmart and I played it and I was like, whoop! Turn the volume down, turn the volume. Because she was just screaming at me, but she clicked UPS access when she checked out. And so her package went to a UPS access place and she wanted me to get it back. I'm not the postal service. I don't know how to do that. Like, that is not a me issue. That's a you issue, right? But I had to sit there and be as nice as I could, okay? But I'm... I don't need that in my life. I don't need you exploding on me every time you do something, okay? That's not me, all right? So tough skin, lady, I bet you're having a really, really bad day, but am I gonna be hard-hearted? No, okay? So tough skin, soft and tender-hearted as God calls us to be, so I love that. Um, acknowledge the hurt that you've had, but stay tender-hearted as God has called, okay? Um, when you choose to walk in this way, Jesus hearted, all right, then you will become a leader who is endearing and effective, all right? You will be an endearing and effective leader, and that's what we want, a heart for people, okay, but also an effective leader, all right? Yes, Shannon, absolutely. You've got to have some tough skin sometimes. You just do, and I think that people forget that. Um, even with, like, even trying to book parties, we forget, okay, that, oh, man, like, 
I really don't want to ask this person because of this. Oh, they're going to say no to me. But that's the name of the game. That's the business we're in. You've got to have tough skin, okay? And as a leader, you better buckle up, buttercup, because it's not always going to be easy, right? You've got to have tough skin. Hey, Sylvia. So tough skin, soft and tenderhearted, a heart for your people, all right? Got to balance it. It's not easy. Nothing is easy to balance, but that's the way it goes. All right. Next is trying to understand their side, whatever they're going through, like this lady who is so almost... Let's call her crazy. This lady, this lady who was so angry, okay, trying to understand her side. What is she? She's a busy single mom. She's in the military. She's a single mom at that, right? And she was getting ready to deploy. Okay, I can totally understand. She's stressed out and I'm just the first person she's taking it out on, right? Do I have to allow all that? No, but can I understand where she's coming from? Absolutely. Absolutely, to a certain extent. Like I was a single mom, I get it. I can't imagine deploying and you know, all these things at once. On top of it, your package is somewhere else. $200 $200 package and you can't get it. Okay. I understand where she's coming from. All right. So that's the thing is trying to understand people's side, whether it's a customer, a teammate, trying to see their side. That doesn't mean you have to like it. It doesn't mean you have to agree with it, but trying to see their side. That is actually something I think I'm pretty darn good at. Good. I've been that way since I was little. I'm like, well, I could see from this side, but I could see from this side. I see how you could get that, but I could see this way too. And sometimes as a leader, that makes it really difficult, but I'm like, I'm going to do it this way. The end, right? And then I have to understand the same thing for other leaders, okay? And other teammates and customers. All right? Okay. So we learn from it and we move on. All right. The last cringy thing, we had three. You, what was it? Y'all, my bad. They're bad and then too bad. So sometimes you're going to deal with hard people. Sometimes you are the problem uh, and that is okay. All right. But we just move on. We learn, we grow, we evolve. All right. The next is too bad. And this is all about your circumstances. Sometimes there are shitty circumstances. They just happen. Okay. Sometimes you feel stuck. All right. So she goes through talking about how they were on a plane and they're waiting for their plane to take off, but it was stuck in like a ton of mud on the tarmac and they couldn't fly. The plane was good to go. The people were good to go. Everything was good to go. But on the outside, the circumstances were not ideal. The plane literally could not take off and it was stuck. Okay. So sometimes you feel stuck when you feel like you should be flying. Again, that happens in this business, okay? When people feel stuck, I'll be completely honest. We say party, 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 party. Absolutely, absolutely. Sometimes you're trying to book all these parties and it is not working. What else can we do? Can we find a bundle to offer? Can we find um, maybe just someone to take a bag party to? Can we sit here and can we take a bag party to an office and go talk to those people? Okay, there's so many things. Um, maybe a fundraiser. Maybe it's time to do a fundraiser. There are other ways, okay? And we have to be, like I said last week for the staircase leader, looking for another exit instead of sitting here and saying, well, I just pushed this button and I'm waiting for the elevator to go up. Okay, but sometimes circumstances are stupid and they suck and it's frustrating. All right, but you just literally have to keep going because in those moments, that's where your business will grow and evolve. Okay, so feeling stuck. All of our outsides look differently, right? That's just the way that it goes. But without resilience in your leadership, you'll stay stuck. So if you are someone who's like, you know what? I'm stuck this month. It's the eighth. I guess I'm done you're not resilient. Okay. If you're looking for the other exit, if you're trying to find another way, if you're like, I'm just going to keep going. If you do the work, that's the key part. If you do the work, okay, it will work out. It does always, almost always. If you do the work, like always that I've experienced always, if you do the work, it will work out. Okay. You got to do the work. Hey, Amanda. Yes. Follow-ups. Exactly. Shannon. There's another way, right? There's another way to get that PRV. Sometimes you're asking, you're spinning your wheels and nothing is happening. But if you do the work, if you're showing up, if you're posting on your stories in your VIP group, doing your follow-ups, talking to people. Okay. If you're posting on your stories and someone is like hearts a warmer, go ask them if they want to get it for free or have off. It's a party conversation. Okay. They say no. Cool. That's fine. Maybe they'll want it later. I don't know. Right. But you have to open your mouth, okay? So we have to remember that. Without resilience, we will stay stuck, okay? Sometimes we are drained and we are exhausted and it feels very, very dark in our world, okay? Yes, you are, Shannon. I know. I know you will. You always do. You always do. Shannon gets a lot like me where you start freaking out really, really quickly and you're like, hold on, hold on. This isn't starting the way I wanted it to. But she always 
keeps going and it always works out because she does the work. You see, she does the work, it works out, okay? So sometimes it's dark and you are drained and exhausted, okay? But there's still treasure in the darkness. There's treasure in the darkness. I think actually, um, Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45 and Isaiah 45 in the Bible, it talks about dark treasures. Okay. There are, and I always say there's streams in the desert. You just have to pray for them. You have to look for them. Okay. Look for that stream. If you just sit there and you're like, it's hot in this desert. I'm parched. I'm just going to sit down. You're going to die of thirst. Okay. You got to look, you got to look, you got to be actively doing something. Okay. To find that stream. But God always provides streams in the desert. He really does. Okay. So God has called us to a life of resilience, even when things are bad. Even when things are bad, we are called to have a life of resilience, okay? Um, she had in there Proverbs 24, 16. Though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again. They rise again, okay? If you're doing the right things, you guys, you're going to rise. All the pieces are there. You just got to keep going, okay? Keep going. So I want you to remember that, and I want you to remember that. It's easy, really, really easy if we're not careful with our mindset to get stuck in crappy situations. And it's easy to be like, Man, I'm sitting on this plane and I'm ready to take off, but it's literally pouring outside. I cannot control the outside circumstances. It's so easy to get stuck in that, okay? But if you're doing the work and you're like, I'm going to do the work, I'm going to look for the treasure in the darkness. What can I learn from this? Even Shannon messaged me this morning. I'm going to evaluate and see what I can do better. That's it right there. That is it. She's going to evaluate and see what she can do better. So what did she miss? What did she not do that she could be doing to help her get to the next level and take off? Okay. We have to think like that as leaders. We have to. All right. So circumstances are going to happen. They're going to happen. That's life. Life is never just a one way ticket on a rainbow of butterflies and unicorns. That's not how life works. Okay. Circumstances happen. Things happen. You do the best that you can and you just keep going. All right. Um, F Scott Fitzgerald said, never confuse a single defeat with a final defeat. Okay. So maybe you just promoted to a new title and you did not get paid a title. And you're like, I feel so defeated. That one month of defeat does not mean, and even like, there's so much more to successful business, right? That goes, well, there's so much more that goes into a successful business. Okay. Then you not being paid a title for one month is going to be okay. All right. That's one single moment of defeat. All right. That doesn't mean the whole year is crap. It doesn't mean you don't deserve to promote in the next few months. It doesn't mean that. Okay. That one moment of defeat does not define your entire journey. All right. And we really have to make sure that we're looking at things that way because otherwise we will be like, this is too hard. I don't want to do this. This is so hard. Okay. It's not always going to be easy. It's not meant to be easy. Leadership is hard. Leadership is hard. Running your own business is hard. Life is hard. Everything's hard. You just have to choose the hard that you're willing to go through to get to that dream. Okay. To get to that dream check. We saw those posted today. Okay. To get to that dream check. Are you willing to go through the hard? Are you willing to look for a way out of that? Are you willing to look for the treasures while you're in the dark? Okay. Maybe you're like, you know what? I am talking to all these people about partying. Every single person is saying no. That's okay. What are the treasures that you just did? You just planted all those seeds for the next few months. All those seeds for the next few months. Okay. So you keep sharing, keep doing your thing and you keep talking about what a blessing sensei is. I talked with, um, I was talking with Paige this morning and she's like, I just always have to remember where I came from, where I started. And I'm like, same, same. It's so easy to get caught up and be like, well, it was like this for the past few months. So I'm really frustrated. Okay. But where did I start? Because where I started is not where I'm at today. And that's a big difference. Okay. Same with you. If you go back through the last few months and you just look at the growth, either in your PRV, your team size, um, your GWV, your title, look at the last few months and compare. Okay. When you're in those dark places, it's the best time to compare and be like, wow, where I started for my first month is not where I'm at today. And this is amazing. It's amazing. Okay. So absolutely, Shannon, if it was easy, every single person would do it. Absolutely. Every single person. And they don't, right? People quit. They bow out. They're really, really strong and then they stop. Okay. Not always going to be easy, but it will be worth it. Okay. There, you still have hard months as an SSD. You still have hard months. You still have months where people say no to partying. You still have times, even as a superstar director, where people are like, I don't like that you did this or you said that. I don't care about this. You still have those things. 
It does not change. It's the name of the game, okay? Your skin gets a little thicker, all right? But remember, we're staying tenderhearted. That's what we're choosing to stay tenderhearted, to love people, okay? We, you get a little bit thicker, and you know, no, but I know that this has gone this way before, so it's going to be okay. And that's it, all right? That mindset changes. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this, okay? Because we're doing the same thing every month, y'all. It's the same thing. Same three legs every month, all right? It just grows and grows, which is amazing. So... I want you to remember that, okay? Even though those circumstances can be ugly, it's going to be okay, all right? So that is our stamina. We are choosing to have stamina. We are choosing to grow through the hard, to keep pushing, because when we do, not only will it give you a way to talk to your team, okay, and help them through the hard and crappy times, but it will also bless your mindset to be looking at the bigger picture, all right? So that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Yes, Emily, please do. We are choosing to have stamina in our leadership. That's going to be one of our leadership qualities. No, resilience. I have the stamina one on my computer and I'm looking at my phone. So not this one. We're doing, well, we're doing both. But this week we're doing resilience. Okay, we're doing resilience. It's only the eighth of the month, y'all. You are good. We are good. We've got this. So be resilient. All right? All right. Y'all have a great, great Friday. Have a great Friday.